Brought to you by Express Care Health and Skin Center. Get in, get out, get better. Pop it in, welcome back. Talking about sex is often hard for some people and in some cases even taboo. But tonight we are talking about safe sex practices and issues related to the topic. Joining me now is Express Care's Dr. Yek Galam. Hi, All right, Doc. In today's day and age, um, there are a lot of people who identify themselves uh, with various sexual orientations. We have straight, bisexual, gay, lesbian. But can you share with us, what, does, what is transgender? No. Transgendered people feel that they're in the wrong gender of their body. So they're born, let's say, as a man, but they feel like a woman inside. And they usually have this idea since birth, you know, since very early childhood. So they'll be, let's say, it's a little boy playing, you know, wanting to play with dolls and dressing up as a girl and so on. Of course, that is frowned upon and they'll be punished for that and ridiculed. So they kind of put put those behaviors uh, down and aside if they can suppress them. That's for little, little girls also can have the same thing, where they're basically born with that feeling inside that, that they're in the wrong body. And uh, so over time throughout their life, um, they may adjust to that and, and, and just live that way, or they may decide to, in the future, change their gender, and that's through a sex change operation. And that's a really difficult decision for anybody to make, whether you agree with it or not. It's a really horrible and difficult thing for them to go through because um, for usually about one year prior to their operation they have to um, pretend uh, like play the role of the other sex so they have to dress that way act that way and then if they if they find that that's going to work for them then they can proceed with their their surgery and medications for life oh wow okay now no matter no matter what your sexual orientation is, it is always important to practice safe sex. Of course. And so, um, can you share with us, how do you go about selecting the right condom? Okay, so there are sort of five different kinds of condoms. One that people may not know about is a female condom. It's a little more difficult to find, but women can use this to protect themselves. They can insert it into their vagina up to eight hours prior to their intercourse, and it's made out of nitrile, which is basically a synthetic rubber. So it can stay inside, and that way they can basically be protected no matter what happens. Um, the other kinds of condoms, of course, we have latex. Then there's polyurethane for people who are latex sensitive. Um, a polyisoprene, that is a new kind, and then lambskin. The thing, all of those condoms protect against pregnancy, but the lambskin ones do not protect against um, uh, HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases, which are unfortunately rampant on Guam. Okay. Now, um, you shared with us the different types of condoms. Now, um, can you tell us what exactly is are those um, condoms made out of? Like you mentioned, okay, poly. So poly yeah. So. Let's, let's take it back. So there's latex, that's basically um, you know a rubber. Some people are latex allergic, so they can't use that. Then there's polyurethane, that's, uh, if you think of that, where have I heard that? Um, paint varnish, same chemical, okay, really? <laughs> but in, in, a, in a different format. Okay, then there's polyisoprene, that one is more like, a, let's say in the spandex family, that one is a little uh, more expensive, but apparently thinner, and uh, it, better maybe for people with more sensitive skin. Um, and the lamb skin, that's made from actual lamb intestines, but that mm -hmm. one is again porous, so you will not be able to be protected against diseases. Condoms can also be coated with um, spermicide. If you use that type of condom, you should be aware that it does kind of break down the, the material that the condom is made out of, so it's not quite as protective either against pregnancy, um, even though it's got spermicide, and against um, diseases. So it's better actually if you get a plain condom and then maybe use spermicide along with it rather than having it be already coated. All right. Now you mentioned that condoms don't always work, especially yeah. in the situations or cases that you presented. Um, so how often do condoms actually fail? Okay, if, and there's been lots of studies on this, and it's a great question. So if you use the condom properly, then the failure rate in one year is only about 2% for pregnancy, meaning that's really, really good. That's if it's put on properly prior to any contact between the, between the two people, and then it's removed immediately after ejaculation so that you know there's no spillage. Um, but basically, if 
Um, there's tearing of the condom um, it, when the package is opened or if it's not removed immediately, then, then it can fail. So in actual real life, like in, in the perfect studies when, when everything's done perfectly, it's only 2%. In real life, it's somewhere about 90%, meaning about 10% of the time it'll fail. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, um, you mentioned spermicide earlier. Now, can you share with us how does it actually work? Mm. It's basically a chemical that kills uh, uh, um, the sperm, and um, it's an anoxanol 9. Um, some people do have allergy or sensitivity to it. It comes as a foam or a gel, and it can be inserted into the vagina prior to intercourse. Now, if you use spermicide, do right. you have to use a condom? Yes, you do. It won't work to just use the spermicide. The reason is because the sperm can pretty much get in right away, get it through the through the sperm side, through the gel, into the uterus and create pregnancy. So you have to have a barrier. That's why we call condoms a barrier uh, contraceptive. All right, thank you so much. You're Doc. welcome. Okay, so when we return